Good morning. Um, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, making um, as a start off of the of the workshop week in which you are going to make something yourself. I want I want to show you some things that we made um, uh, recently and, uh, and also a little while back, um, which is not this picture. This picture is uh, taken this summer when Gilbert and I were doing the Tour de Bois uh, en Suisse in Switzerland. And um, we were visiting or revisiting uh, projects that we know uh, from magazines or from uh, when they were newly built. And we revisited some pro projects there uh, to see how they are doing and how they, uh, how they aged and became, uh, got character. Um, one of these places we visited was Flims in, uh, in Canton uh, Wallis, I think it is, or, or Kur. Well, um, Graubünden, uh, which, which is a, a beautiful uh, uh, village and it has a lot of these old uh, barns still in the, in the village center, also used until this day. And you can see how they are constructed uh, built uh, with logs just uh, stacked on top of each other with wooden uh, wooden connections and they they simply um, can um, how do you say that master the centuries they uh, they survive and uh, it's beautiful to see that they're still used also sometimes um, as, as uh, uh, refurbished into houses and also when when they get um, when they get a, a little bit worn on the mainly on the foundation part, then they are simply to uh, to uh, repair. So it's a beautiful way of building. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, wood um, because you all know that wood is uh, is our favorite material, and it's also a material that has been here for for centuries. Uh, very long lifespan in buildings one, when they are, when applied in the right manner and under the right conditions. Uh, for instance, these these examples that actually are centuries old. Uh, this is probably one of the oldest uh, and largest uh, wooden buildings uh, that still that still exist. 58 meters high, built uh, in the eighth century. Huh? So that's 1,200 years ago. Um, of course, wood uh, comes from a natural um, background. It is grown, uh, it grows on our planet, and um, it has been, I think, the, one of the one of the oldest uh, materials to build with. Um, also, uh, it's very important that trees are, um, um, how do you say that, well, well preserved and well kept. Um, and to be, be able to grow to, uh, to, uh, to a size in which they can be harvested. Uh, some grow faster than others. And of course, the, the wood that you use is also, um, um, let's say, dependent on where it comes from in the tree. Uh, so here you see a couple of examples of where parts of a tree uh, can be used in different... Uh, I don't read Japanese, so I can't tell you exactly where it is, but... Uh, you you get the picture. Um, also structure, um, this is one that's particularly nice because it is a structure that is called the reciprocal structure, which is um, the, the pieces are actually uh, uh, supporting off each other. Uh, so imagine that this is kind of a sort of a, um, perpetual endless construction if you if you sure. think about it i have some people coming in please sit down huh? oh, we already started and join us um one of the nice things about uh, wood is that um, um there is this um, idea that it is uh, connected to uh to uh, to time uh, and what they do in Japan is they they have this tradition that every 20 years they renew the Ise Shingu uh, shrine exactly the way they built it 
20 years earlier. And they've been doing that since over 1200 years. Uh, so the next time they will do it is 2033, um, which is in um, about uh, 12 years time. But uh, so what they do is they actually train every 20 years, they train a new generation of carpenters to, to these uh, techniques of building uh, Japanese, uh, this Japanese shrine, and they make exact copies of all the details, all the parts, and rebuild it. And then after the, they build the new one, they tear down the old one. And here you see them together. You see on the right, you see, of course, the old one, uh, which is still pretty okay, but you can see the, that there has been some aging. On the left, the new one in uh, pristine uh, wood. I think it is uh, it's cedar, uh, which they use. So uh, wonderful tradition. And that way they sort of perpetuate the tradition of wood building and carpentry. Um, because Japanese joinery, of course, we all know that. It's, it's a, a beautiful way of joining materials. And it has also been very very much uh, developed into different uh, very complex uh, joints. I cannot really, uh, I, I don't know if you ever try to make one of these uh, Japanese joints, but they're really uh, very sophisticated. This one, for instance, which is able to take tension and pressure at the same time. So who knows who, how this works? Uh, it can I get a prize at the end of the lecture? <laughs> Well, first of all, I want to talk a bit about what wood actually is, because wood um, basically is air, uh, you could say. Um, there's been an experiment uh, by a Belgian uh, scientist who already in the 18th century thought, where, where does this material come from? And he, uh, he planted a tree in a pot. He let it grow for a couple of years. Then he uh, took the tree out and uh, weighed the soil in the pot, which he weighed before as well. And he found out there was no soil um, missing. So where did the, all that material come from? And that was the first hint that, that uh, wood is actually um, growing from air. And also scientifically uh, researched, of course, in our days that that looks at what, what cellulose is really uh, about. Eh? It's, it's carbon, it's hydrogen, it's, it's oxygen. And it actually comes from carbon dioxide and water molecules, which are in the atmosphere. Um, about 95 or 96% of a tree's material comes directly from the air. So it's basically uh, pretty much a miracle. Um, so that also means that wood is carbon negative, as you can see in this graph. Huh? All the main ma building materials that you see here are gray on the right, causing uh, carbon emissions. Wood has a little bit of carbon emissions in transport and manufacturing, but a lot of carbon uh, sink in, in the material itself. So therefore a negative overall. Um, and that also, I think this tool might be nice. It's, it's unfortunately in Dutch, but um, it is a tool by the Dutch um, um, carpentry industry. They, they made a tool in which you can calculate from the amount of wood volume in your project, um, how much uh, carbon is actually uh, sequestered. Um, so you see here also in this graph, uh, that for a project we did, the L house, 100 cubic meters stored uh, 62 uh, tons of uh, carbon dioxide. Wood is also uh, very safe. I it has been uh, said before, eh? it's uh, fire resistant as long as it's massive. Um, it also means that the surface is charred and forms a protection for the interior, but also in terms of temperature. So at, at the surface of a, of a fire, uh, of a wooden massive element, the, the temperature of course is high, but in the center where, where of the material, it's actually room temperature and therefore it's always safe. 
Uh, a wooden structure is safer than a steel structure in case of fire. I don't seem to be able to continue, which is strange. Can't go to the next slide. <laughs> oh, there it is. Um, also, wood has heat capacity. Uh, it can store heat. This And this graph shows that uh, 100 millimeter thick um, wooden uh, uh, facade, so massive, uh, so CLT, in this instance, is, is the purple line. The red line is the, the surface temperature of the building uh, on the outside. And you see a huge difference. You, you see that the the purple line, which is the interior of the of the wood, is actually very stable at the 20, deg 20 degrees temperature, even at night, because uh, uh, it works both ways. Uh, so it's a huge uh, uh, comfort comforting capacity in the wood, uh, which which you have for free, basically. Uh, this tool, I think every student or architect should should know. It's called the uh, Ubacos. It is a, a super handy tool to calculate. Um, apologize for it not being very sharp, but it's a um, it's a calculation um, uh, device for facades, basically envelopes of buildings. You can choose all the materials. You can put them together in in different orders. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, play with the thickness to uh, to get uh, to certain uh, um, um, uh, uh, u values. Uh, it also has a new feature that it can calculate uh, the carbon footprint of the materials that you're using. Um, and <clears throat> I use it a lot. It's also very instrumental for uh, for clients to see uh, how how a uh, an envelope performs. And it's always good if you're trying to use um, a lot of these materials like wood or wood fiber insulation like we do, then it's always nice to prove that it actually works because people don't really trust it that much because they don't know it. But uh, that will soon change. Um, of course, also wood oh, is, uh, is um, yeah. uh, in the case of CLT, Can it's very it? interesting. Somebody is talking. Uh, <laughs> Um, these are tests that be, have been done on CLT uh, house of uh, six stories in Italy. Um, the, they put them on a shaking table and, and started shaking it and it was extremely safe. Uh, much safer than, uh, than brick, um, of which most of the buildings are made in, uh, in these earthquake prone areas in Italy. Also, I think this could be a good solution for the Netherlands to build in the northeastern part of our country where we have these earthquakes due to uh, natural gas extraction. Um, well, forestry, as I think, is at the base of all this uh, use of water. We have to have healthy and, and large areas of forest to, to be able to do all the things we want to do with wood. Um, it's also I think um, good to to see that in Europe, uh, actually uh, the the forests are well managed and are actually growing. Every year, about 500 million cubic meters of wood is harvested from European forests, and it's uh, I, I call it harvested. It's not it's not cutting down. It's really harvesting because it grows back every. Uh, every year and there's actually more growth than we actually take out. Well, 500 million cubic meters of wood, if you think about it, it's, you could, if you would only use that to build houses, you can buy, build 10 million in a year, 10 million family houses in a year. Uh, but of course we also use wood for other things. Huh? We have to, uh, we have to, uh, um, we have to divide it a little bit between different products, but of course it is uh, it is a large amount. Uh, also, wood is very well used. I think that most of most of the tree can be used and is used 
in um, in our uh, wood industry and also wood is a very uh, durable uh, and healthy material um, for the interior of houses uh, it's it's quite good in terms of uh, moisture it regulates the moisture in the house may uh, mostly by itself uh, you really need to do less forced ventilation if you were living in a wooden house compared to a concrete house uh, and is also uh, well structurally very strong and uh, can be very expressive i really like this uh, feature it looks like it's on one pillar of course it's not but it's a very nice uh, picture also because of the lightness of wood you can um, built on top of existing buildings which is a large um, uh, assignment we have to do eh, in intensifying our uh, built environment we can do, actually do it by building on top of other existing buildings um, engineered wood products uh, there are many of them we also work with a lot of uh, of these materials i will show you a couple of things in a while and of course, the, the expression of wood, the, the feeling and the atmosphere is pretty clear that it's very uh, nice for us humans to be around. And uh, even, even this space, which is not really, I would say, uh, so practical maybe, but it's very nice to, to be there and you could actually nestle yourself within the logs. Uh, a project we did, uh, already shown by uh, Gilbert in his first lecture, uh, an infill in the Amsterdam Canal House. O obviously, when you work in a city like Amsterdam, you have a lot of tiny spots to build in. Uh, and then what comes handy is that this, this building system of, of this CLT allows you to do uh, specific geometries that are not possible in other materials. Uh, because of the lightness, because of the strength uh, and the, the slenderness of the structure, you can make very elegant uh, infills. Uh, also, um, in, this, in this particular uh, house, this is a sketch that was made by the structural engineer uh, because we, we, we had a multi-story building here um, and um, the, the panels are actually uh, spanning multiple stories huh? so we don't build it we didn't build it up story by story but the, the panels actually span over uh, multiple stories and sort of uh, in that way it was possible to make this uh, special geometry especially because here there was a huge a huge chunk out of the uh, out of the structure and this was wasn't simply possible in another uh, material um, here you see a, a drawing uh, how you how you actually work with this CLT material huh? when you make drawings for it. Um, you see the this is the stuff that that will uh, help you help you make the production drawings for the for the production phase. We actually engineered this together uh, with uh, Luning, and um, we organized the the buying of the wood ourselves. So we were in direct con contact with the production facility. And that also is, I think, very good for architects to, to be on top of this, because then you have a lot of control on the outcome. Uh, this is some details. Uh, a lot of uh, details uh, were made. And I think when I show this, uh, you understand how it works. Huh? It's CLT is basically just wood on wood and you just screw it together and that also means you can unscrew it which is an which is a good uh, circular way of constructing but you also see this diagonal screws these diagonal screws are actually i think why why did you do it like this but it's actually much stronger than than a, a horizontal screw which is uh, next to it the diagonal is fully um, tensioned and that of course a screw being metal uh, really loves tension and can fully be uh, be used. Um, <clears throat> well, this this particular project was uh, was pre-assembled on the wharf of the contractor. Was brought to the to the uh, to the place where it was constructed on two big uh, lorries. We had a crane in the street. It was five in the morning. Uh, well. 
round seven, uh, it was hoisted in. You see, we don't have any space at all to maneuver. It was 10 centimeters on both sides. And there was um, already pre-installed insulation where you couldn't reach it anymore later. So all the walls facing the adjacent buildings were already insulated. Uh, of course, um, the L House, um, our first project in uh, in, in uh, CLT, um, but and this pavilion, which was one, I think, may, was it one of the case studies? Uh, but it actually, um, uh, stacked stacked structure. I I showed this a uh, couple of materials that are uh, integrated systems uh, in wood. Uh, some innovations on insulation, uh, wood foam uh, is being uh, looked at, but also digital manufacturing. Uh, this uh, beautiful, um, it was a stage for a for a for a opera outdoor. It's completely built in wood, CNC milled. Uh, it looks uh, it's it's a copy of the the Borromino uh, church. Um, also innovations are digital manufacturing. CNC milling gives you options to uh, connect uh, in multiple ways and with dry connections. Uh, also, you know this one, the wiki house has just been one realized in the Netherlands, um, built by the, by the inhabitants themselves. So pretty cool developments. Um, digital manufacturing with robots, uh, we also visited uh, uh, the excellent center of uh, Achim Menges. You will be hearing more from that uh, tonight. It was really great stuff they are doing there. Um, Bauboegen, which will Anna Niemann will probably also address later uh, this week. Um, LVL beach veneer, which is much stronger than uh, than uh, spruce veneers. Um, also hybrid uh integration of carbon fiber in wood um, uh, elements give you give you more strength uh, uh, so a lot of things developed this one i th think is particularly <laughs> uh, nice it's a it's a super simple uh box beam and this this image is uh, not showing the scale but it's actually uh, very large they can produce them up to 24 meters long and they are 800 millimeters high so a table height uh, and they can actually uh, span all this distance um, easily it's very simple it's it's just a um, uh, a plywood and a, and a sawn timber uh, glued together. Super nice uh, development. Well, this is one that that uh, Herman Bloomer uh, developed for Shigeruban. He didn't talk about it in his lecture, but um, I know it's it's a uh, it's um, uh, it's a very innovative uh, design. Which these these beach um, um, joints. Uh, were actually uh, developed by him uh, as a sort of an anatomic uh, feature uh, showing the the all wood connections. Um, really beautiful. Uh, it also looks looks like a great uh, toy to play with, uh, but it's actually in a man size. Um, so structural systems for multi-story buildings. You see in this graph that. Um, some different systems come in play in, in different types of buildings. Um, <clears throat> there is, of course, the development of the tall wood, which I'm not really going into much, but I think it is uh, uh, something that has been done now around the world to start building the highest tower. But definitely possible in wood, but a lot of uh, effort has to be made to, uh, to stabilize it, to keep it on the ground ground because it's so light uh, so that's it's not for all purposes so smart but i think if you think about mid mid rise and low rise buildings wood is very uh, very much um, uh, at the point so brock commons maybe you know this building was erected very quickly 
because it was completely uh, uh, prefabbed after the concrete was in, in place and they started already building the facades while they were still building the, the main structure. And it looks really beautiful. Uh, this was a model that was made by students um, uh, as a wor workshop to, to sort of get to know the structure. A really beautiful uh, model showing also the joints, the joints which actually make possible that the floors are without beams. Um, yeah, continuous CLT floor on top of the columns. It looks really beautiful and you would, you would hope that it would look like this, but if you now enter this building, it's completely covered in gypsum. So not so nice, but that's fire regulations. Um, but I, I like it more this way. Um, innovations um, in engineered timber, you have modification you have impregnation, you have coating. Uh, we'll go a bit into the modification uh, because maybe you've heard of this process. It's called acetylation of wood. It, uh, it is a process in which uh, the wood is permanently modified um, from the natural th product that it is into a more stable product. And you might think, oh, but this is probably chemical and, and toxic in fact it is not it is actually completely eco friendly because it's done with vinegar the stuff that you use to make uh, your salad taste nice and so they take a little bit of a, a little molecule from the vinegar which is called an acetic acetic anhydride and it's a mo molecule that binds with the the hydro hydroxyl molecule of the wood and the hydroxyl molecule of the wood uh, that is the one that makes the bond with water and makes the makes the wood hydrophile uh, so this the wood basically becomes hydrophobic uh, more than 75 percent uh, uh, reduction of and so that means that it becomes extremely stable and you could say that it almost is inert to water um, so that that rules out all this bending and and, and cracking and um, that happens normally on uh, if you if you apply wood on on the exterior. Um, so that makes it very very useful for uh, for facade um, and outdoor um, uses. It's called acoya. That sounds uh, it sounds like. Uh, tropical hardwood, but it's not. Huh? So it's basically the, the, the wood that they use is, um, is a, a pine that's growing in, uh, in uh, New Zealand, but it's been planted in Spain as well. Uh, and it's a fast growing pine, uh, which has a um, pinus radiata, and it has a lot of radial uh, vessels. So it's easy to impregnate. What they're also using is poplar, which is a very common tree in our, uh, in our um, country and also in the Euro rest of Europe. Uh, also fast growing tree, um, but a deciduous tree. Uh, so these two uh, woods are actually um, uh, the, the, uh, say that, the resource for, for making a koya. Um, well, we did a, a project in The Hague, which was a small infill project um, and this facade uh, made of a koya will go a little bit into this project because it was built on a very small um, site in The Hague um, on top of a, of a, a bunker, um, a bomb shelter from the Second World War. And the, it had a house on top. So the, the house was on the bomb shelter to sort of hide the bomb shelter from view. And um, so we, we couldn't build something uh, heavy on it. It had to be light. Well, then wood, of course, is, comes in handy. And uh, it was an extension of the house. Uh, and the program was a kitchen on the ground floor and a bathroom on the, on the, um, on the, on the second floor. And because it was a very small site, there wasn't a lot of daylight. So we decided to, to make a lot of uh, uh, daylight opening, but that leaves you less uh, space for, for structure. So we, we decided together with the, the engineer that 
the structure of the facade, so the, the frame of the window would also be the structure. And uh, this was a bit an inspiring um, um, furniture piece for this for this project. This is Riet, Gerrit Rietveld, who uh, who done that, and it's actually in the Hague uh, in the Ber Berlage Museum, Museum. But here you see the the facade, um, which has actually uh, I'm going to show it uh, in the next picture. But the the so the frame of the facade is actually uh, the load bearing structure for the floor of the bathroom. So it's carried by by these two uh, by these two um, pillars which are here in blue. These two are actually carrying the floor. The other side is a wall which is here adjacent to the neighbor. But on this side, there's only these two tiny columns that uh, that are carrying the floor. And that was possible by making this detail. Uh, so the, there's the wood on wood connection with a, a, a steel plate in between to disperse the forces to a wider area uh, to, uh, to avoid the concentration of forces to, uh, to resulted in this detail. Um, very slim uh, structure, in fact. Huh? So here we're, we're building it up. Uh, the carpet, they actually built these, this, this window frame over two stories. That was what that was two elements and they basically formed the, the extension and the, and the floor was then built in later. So first they put the frames there and then put the floor in later. You see that, that here, these two points, these two points actually carry the whole floor. And then we finish it off with these Akoya uh, lattice work, which provides um, the closure to the facade, but also gives view. It also directs the light and it also takes care of the privacy issues, which you all obviously have if you have a bathroom on the first floor uh, and you don't want <laughs> your neighbors to peek in. So we worked with these, these lattice and these Akoya lattices are actually cut. Uh, they are parallelograms in section. So they are not rectangular, but parallelograms. So the water runs off at, uh, at all times. And you could also flip them around. So in the, at the, at the top level, they actually are flipped, so they avoid the the looks from outside to inside. Uh, and that, that was a little play with the density as well. Looks really beautiful uh, um, still. Uh, I don't have a recent picture, but uh, I can show you another project in Akoya, which is um, a very elegant house in the middle of a, also a tiny plot in Oeschees is near Leiden. Um, um, used to be the site of a former um, um, gardener who had his barn here and uh, a greenhouse. And the barn, which is the big volume, was a big volume in the back and the greenhouse in front sort of mimicked, is mimicked in this design. It was a, um, inspired by it but also the the urban envelope didn't allow to go to go any to do any other volume so we we decided to make this uh, uh, in wood because that was also the material of the barn and we decided to make the the, the greenhouse part so to say in in wood and glass and and metal because it mimics more the the glass appearance that it had before. Uh, also here we used uh, we used a koya and we built the structure itself from uh, CLT. Uh, here you see the plot. It's a very tiny plot, completely uh, uh, in between neighbors. So that also was very demanding on the building process. So it was evident that also here, like in the the example we showed with the with the canal uh, in Amsterdam, is that <coughs> a high a uh, highly prefabricated um, structure was in, was in order to build fast without too much, <coughs> excuse me, without too much hassle for the neighbors. Um, so <clears throat> after, again, the concrete foundation was put in, uh, there was a, a structure which was completely in wood. Um, this is a drawing that shows the, the wooden, um, structure so the wooden structure only this was used to 
to communicate with the structural engineer and the and the builder, uh, the production of the of the CLT, CLT and the builder, uh, which was a German carpenter who came from uh, Bavaria to to build this house. This is a drawing that shows how you order these elements. And so it's basically uh, you draw all the elements uh, one by one, and you can also uh, uh, order all the the openings and all the space for appliances. Uh, so you you have to decide upfront. Uh, where where the sockets will be, where the where the pipes will be. Um, so it's pretty, um, I would say that pretty <laughs> delicate to not make make mistakes in this stage. Um, on the other hand, mistakes always happen, and also in this project, mistakes happened, uh, but then they were repaired uh, later, and you you couldn't see anything anymore uh, of these uh, repairs. Uh, this is a drawing was made by the by the builder, the carpenter who built it. He built the the whole thing already in his computer, um, just to test if everything works, if you get the choreography of the project right. And so you basically build it already before you build it physically. You build it uh, mentally and in the computer, and that allows you to to simply test the whole process. Uh, and to uh, to optimize, to change, to make uh, to make to well to <laughs> to actually make it work, because when it arrives uh, and it's all stacked on the on the the truck, uh, you really want the right piece to be at the top and not at the bottom. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, you also see that all the elements are are numbered. Actually, this whole house fitted on one truck. So there was just one truckload which built this whole uh, house. Um, well, the structure of it, of course. Um, and you see that all these elements are, are numbered. Um, so these numbers correspond to the numbers we put on the drawings. Yeah, and point. then, uh, of course, when you put these things together, there's all, all kinds of details. Eh? You, you're, you're getting, uh, you're getting yeah. across. Uh, I, I, see, I hear somebody talking, so please so unmute yourself. Nicht. Für uns um, nicht, you see that, that the sockets okay. is all already, already uh, um, cut out of the of, out of the wood, and also the the there is an internal uh, um, hole uh, drilled in to to uh, to put to put the wiring in. Um, it's pretty tricky. Yeah? You have to decide upfront where all the sockets are going to be. So you have to basically uh, design together with the user. You have to design how you're going to use this. Uh, where are you going to put your bed? Where are you going to put your uh, your closets? Yeah? Because you have to know where these things are going. So it's pretty uh, it's pretty nerve wracking sometimes. But then uh, Fixing them eh, to the foundation, very important with wooden buildings. Otherwise, they fly away because they're so light. Uh, even this mass timber is considered light in terms of uh, structural engineers. And you really have to tie it down uh, to, the, to the concrete structure. Also, um, connections are super simple eh, because it's mainly um, um, a screw connect connection. It's also dry. It's no. There's no glue involved, uh, so it can be undone. Uh, these these screws are recessed in the wall and then later filled with plugs, so you don't see them because all of this wood was in view later. Uh, the, the the inhabitants they live between uh, between the wooden uh, surface. Um, on the here are some pictures from the from the build. Um, unfortunately, it was November, so we had some rain, um, but uh, it, it dried up pretty quickly uh, after it was built. The whole structure was built in four days, um, four and a half days, and it, this was uh, this was in place, and it all fits together like a, like a puzzle, and it's super um, accurate. Uh, you you have tolerances of less than a millimeter. And it's, it's really a, 
it's really uh, fun to build this uh, with this system. Here you see diagonal screws. They are used to, to uh, uh, in the next picture, here you see the roof. And this, this, the, the edge of the roof on top here, where it has the diagonal screws, you simply put them in it before and then they lay on, lay it on top and then finish it. Uh, here you see a, a big anchor, this huge anchor here, which was used to, uh, to tie down, like I said before, eh, to deal with the wind forces on the building. Um, an interior view, and here you see the, the, um, the lower volume, which was basically uh, not supported by walls or beams. It is a, uh, well, in Dutch, they call it a, a schaal constructie. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of um, um, self, uh, self uh, uh, spanning structure that, that, that works like a, like a, a dome-like structure would work. Uh, and um, because all the edges are, um, are screwed uh, and then it carries itself. Huh? So basically without any supports in between. Also, this was only possible with this material. Here you see uh, how that works. There are actually no beams uh, involved. And here is the, the finished space. And the last thing on top. This is what it looks like just after it was built. Um, you see also on the interior that is completely in wood. Uh, some people think it's too much wood, but these people are really happy in it and it, the house feels great. Um, the facade, uh, like I said, was a Koya. Um, and it was built with uh, with this detail. This was the detail that was drawn to uh, to uh, to show the contractor how we wanted it to be built, and all the detailing evolved from uh, from discussions on the on the building site with the carpenters who were doing the work, and explaining how uh, how they should turn corners, etc., and to to make the divisions. This um, this is an example of a window with a with a, a louvre um, um, shading. Uh, also the, so the window frames were a Koya, the, the siding was a Koya, and on the left, uh, right after construction, on the right five years later. Can you see any movement in the wood? So it's, this shows that it's, that's really super stable. Eh? You see that the wood is 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 uh, graying and aging, and there's some some uh, growth of uh, algae, uh, but it stays beautifully straight and in place. And it's it's a uh, it's basically nailed, so uh, it's also not screwed. So that means that that if there would be tension, then it would really start to work and 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 come apart, but it doesn't, it's super, super tight. And this Akoya material is actually guaranteed uh, 50 years on a facade. So as long as, for instance, tiles or bricks. And it's wood, eh? it's not uh, something else. Well, here, um, uh, of course, a CLT with dowels, uh, you would need some more material, but this is actually much cleaner because it doesn't contain glue. And you also see here beach screws that uh, screw it uh, together. Now the beach screws are actually dried in an oven and then screwed into the wood. They expand a little bit, bit because they take the humidity of the surrounding wood and then you, you uh, and it's, it's completely uh, stuck. So uh, it's called Nurholz, eh? which that means uh, just wood. Okay, this one uh, I put in for Max, uh, the Prosto Museum Research Center, which he was puzzling uh, all week uh, about with, uh, with that joint. Unfortunately, my PDF, it doesn't work. The GIF, because otherwise you could see how it goes together. <laughs> uh, some other uh, fancy joinery uh, from Japan. These things are again possible due to uh, digital uh, manufacturing. Uh, so. Uh, it used it, it, it's basically too expensive to have carpenters 
do this for you, but in a digital manufacturing environment, you can actually produce this again uh, at, a, at a reasonable costs. And these kind of um, connections come back. Um, a little bit on my hobby project, which is uh, uh, we have a house in the north of France for 15 years. Um, it's a small farm uh, house. And um, well, actually, if you like, if you like to uh, work with wood or with other materials like earth or stone, then this is this is really uh, uh, a super a super nice thing to do to simply buy an old uh, ruin uh, somewhere in the world and uh, and make it your project, make it your your spot. Uh, this is what 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 we did 15 years ago, um, <clears throat> uh, just four hours away from from Amsterdam, um, so in the north of France, but France all the way, I would say. Um, uh, in this barn uh, here, actually here in front, there is a bench, which is a Douglas tree. I got it as a present from my neighbor who, as you, as you might not know, but all French, um, um, they have, in France, they have this tradition that on the French countryside, when you have um, when you have some land that you take part of it and plant it with trees when you are young. Huh? So uh, parents do it for their children. Um, and so by the time they are at an age that they're going to marry or build a house, they have some, some material on a terrain. And also my neighbor, he has a, he has a little terrain where he has trees, Douglas trees, oak trees, uh, that were planted by his parents for him and a beautiful tradition. And um, so whenever he wants to build something, and fortunately he is handy enough to do that, he cuts down a tree and uh, he, he, uh, he's, he saws it into planks or beams and, and starts building something. Actually, this, is, this bench is actually now a bench because he couldn't he couldn't saw it. It was a Douglas tree and was too hard. He couldn't saw it, and then he said, "Okay, I have to throw it away." I said, "You're not going to throw this away. It's it's a it's a pity." And uh, he gave it to me. He said, "Oh yeah, you want it? You get it." And then I, now I have a beautiful bench of a Douglas tree. Um, but obviously, when you have a very old uh, house like uh, like like this uh, house, this is part of the barn that was constructed in uh, in the 18th century. Uh, you also could have some work to do. Um, this was a this was the consequence of a, a leakage that had been happening for for many decades. Uh, so part of the southwestern facade of the barn was uh, was completely uh, uh, destroyed. And it's something that I did uh, two years ago uh, as, a, as a summer project um, uh, to, to start restoring this, uh, this barn. So I peeled it off. I, I looked at what the structure was like. I tried to mimic it uh, as much as, uh, as possible. And I tried to do it all with materials that, that came from the, from the site or from, from the local vicinity. Uh, my, my neighbor, a very generous man, again, he he had some old beams lying around from a barn he had demolished, a barn that was from the same age as this barn. So the wood pieces were also the same size. That was really nice, really fortunate. Um, I started peeling it off. I built a scaffold. Um, I, well, here you see what the problem is. These were actually oak, uh, oak beams uh, completely on. Huh? So, the fact that this facade was still standing was just due to the fact that there was this in interior boarding that was in place. Uh, otherwise, it would have uh, long come down. Also at the top, uh, it was also, uh, the top beam was also completely gone. So I had to replace everything. Uh, well, it starts by, by cleaning it up, of course. Here, here, I have this beam here, which you can see that it's a little bit Bent. It was this this beam that I got from my neighbor, and when I when I started um, putting it in, I saw that the, the bend of the beam somehow fit into this this bend of, of the brick. 
So it was almost like, you know, it was meant to be. This one, this one should be here. Well, I made I made a connection with simple lab joint with the existing uh, with the existing oak beam um, that was that was already there. I cut off the piece that was bad, uh, and uh, so I made this simple lab joint, and uh, that's how it sits uh, now. And I also started working on the on the joinery here. You see, for instance, you see here this oak beam here, which was used to make the the diagonal. That's this one. This one in the back, this diagonal, uh, that that gives you uh, bracing. But this this wooden, uh, uh, well, this 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 wooden uh, joint. Huh? So it was cut out. Uh, the hole was made in the in the lower uh, plate, and was inserted. You see here that this beam is also an old beam, and from the outside it looks very bad. Huh? It looks it looks deteriorated. There's there's traces of uh, of little uh, beetles um, uh, gnawing at it, uh, eating it, and there's a lot of, uh, uh, well, I say that, uh, well, it simply looks uh, old. But you see that the interior of the wood is actually pristine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And this beam is uh, 250 years old. And this, in the inside, is perfect condition. And so only the little, little bit on the outside, so Five millimeters, ten millimeters has this uh, has has this uh, this deterioration, but the inside is pristine, and that is that is what I noticed with all the wood that I was cutting up for this facade. That it looked it looked on the outside, you would think, oh, I don't want to use this. It looks uh, it looks bad, but it actually was very good on the inside. So never judge something by its cover. Uh, also. It is, of course, uh, a hybrid structure. Huh? It is a wooden frame uh, filled in with earth, and the earth is also local. It's from the direct um, from this terrain. Huh? So the earth from this terrain um, uh, is actually used used for for making these earth walls. They mix it. They just dig it up. They mix it with straw. As a as a kind of uh, fiber fibro fabric uh, binder, and then uh, put it put it in the um, in between the the wooden structure. You see these 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 little um, horizontal pieces of wood. They are actually fitted between the the posts. Um, not fixed. Huh? It's it's uh, it's also it's only friction. Because at one one side they are pointy, on the other side they are they are sharp. So you you stick the the point into a pre-drilled hole and you fix it. You lock it by just pushing it down. And it is also completely reversible. And uh, the fact that it was reversible was that made it possible also to take this wall apart. Huh? Because the the old walls I took apart. Uh, and actually reuse all this material. Uh, so it basically comes from, from the site. Um, here you see it more in, in detail. Uh, it's also oak, so that means that it's, it's very durable. Um, the wood and the earth go very well together. They have the same behavior in terms of moisture, so you, so you never get any, uh, any uh, problems in that respect. Um, the, the earth will after installment will uh, shrink a little bit. And because these woods are inside, it sort of doesn't fall out of the facade. Here you see uh, just before we started, uh, uh, we started applying the, the earth. Uh, of course, it's also a social event in this case, because everybody wanted to participate. This is my, my daughter and a friend uh, helping with, uh, with the making of the, of the the um, the earth mix, uh, mixing the straw and the water until it's kind of liquid, uh, not not too liquid, but a little bit uh, um, uh, stiff. We also made a, a cast on either side to fill it up, and then we just filled it. Uh, we we in total this this little piece of facade was one sixteen hundred kilograms of earth. 
So one and a half tons goes into it. Yeah, so it's also very massive afterwards. Uh, very, um, very, very high heat capacity as well. Uh, so this this is how it came out of the cast. Uh, you still see a lot of holes, so you have to fill again afterwards. That's what my uh, my wife did, uh, filling up the the holes, making it smooth, and then when after a couple of days it looks like this already starts cracking. Uh, it starts uh, coming, uh, it starts shrinking. You see the the, sh the shrinkage happening, um, but that's that's okay because you can still keep repairing it and filling it after. Um, of course, it couldn't leave couldn't leave like this. It's southwest facade, huh? so you have to protect it from from rain. Uh, and I decided to make the same uh, uh, wooden. Um, uh, facade as, as it was there before. I had this, uh, this is actually the only material that I bought to repair this uh, facade. It is poplar. Uh, it's from the from the area. It was cut in a, in a sawmill, uh, a couple of, a couple of uh, villages further down. And um, um, it cost, I think, 200 uh, euros, super cheap. Um, and here I started applying it. This is one summer uh, after the, we did the, the, the earth building and the structure. The next summer I started with the facade and applying it and uh, uh, overlapping uh, elements. Uh, actually did it with nails that are um, um, stainless. Uh, so uh, it's also that is, I think, the only thing besides the wood that I that I actually bought stainless nails to uh, to keep it lasting a long time. And here you see it advancing. I made the the windows. The windows are actually uh, were not in the facade. They were they were uh, an adjustment to get some light inside. Uh, but this is the way it looks now. And um, a more detailed example. Um, it's all all wood, and uh, and you see that nature already finds its way. Uh, so the beautiful thing about this kind of building is that you're sharing this with uh, with um, animals and insects, uh, and they they really find shelter in these kinds of uh, details. Uh, this is a. I wanted to show you this because I came across this guy um, this summer. Um, he's a carpenter. He used to work in in uh, in big projects uh, in 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 Belgium, but he was fed up with this this uh, standardization of building, and he decided he went back to his roots in France and he builds uh, he builds houses. Well, not just houses, but he builds um, in wood for for clients, uh, and he does it in a way that is completely circular. So he he goes to a site uh, to a client and he asks, "What do you want to do?" And then they go together to the forest. They cut one or two trees, and they completely use the whole tree to uh, to make something. So he made all of this himself from just two trees. So it's one is a large tree for the facade uh, mostly and the Douglas for structure and um, for the, the window frames are actually also made by himself. Um, so, and he just does this for, for two or three months. He, he is there with the client and just works. It's, it's a very interesting uh, way of uh, approaching uh, uh, architecture. Here you see actually that the stair is made of uh, a, a tree trunk. It's, it's basically a tree trunk itself. And also you see that the branches are used as, a, um, as balustrades. Well, I don't know about you, but I was, um, I was carpenting also this weekend for <laughs> uh, a reuse uh, job I, I, I was doing for my wife. She has some tabletops in bamboo that were, that were not necessary anymore. And uh, I, I converted them into cabinets 
uh, for her and uh, they're going to be in her new office. So I've been doing some um, carpenting this weekend. I hope you're going to be doing some carpenting this week. Um, so I hope you, uh, you got a bit inspired by this lecture and um, yeah, uh, I hope you have a nice week of make. I, I still want to show you this. Um, wood is a primary building material, just like uh, steel, uh, brick or concrete, but it's the only one that is renewable, that cleans air and water, that uh, has the lowest embodied energy, is completely reusable, recyclable, and 100% biodegradable. So what a great material. Thank you.